If you've ever found yourself picking colors, you already know that the color you see online or even in store can look completely different once it's applied to your walls at home. If you want to know how to avoid this common problem, then stay tuned. I'm James from thepaintpeople.com, and on this awesome channel, we do two videos every single week about painting and decorating. Our focus is not only on professional contractors, but also the enthusiasts out there looking to learn about the technical aspects of painting. If you haven't subscribed yet, I strongly suggest you do. Whether you're a pro or an average Joe, we got you covered. Today on Paint School, I think it's time for a test. Don't panic, I'm not here to quiz you or anything, However, I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about testers. Color testers are small samples of tinted paint that are available in virtually every color you can possibly think of. The size of a Benjamin Moore color tester is about a pint of paint, so it ends up being half a quart or an eighth of a full gallon. Testers are designed to be just that, a little taste test of a color before committing to a full gallon or pail or however much paint you need. They can be quite handy when you're not 100% confident about the color you're going with. Let's go through some of the clear benefits of buying testers and then maybe dabble into some things worth considering while getting them. Firstly, testers can be tinted into over 4,000 colors. Those little tiny cans, they're actually tinted, each one. Benjamin Moore's tester pots are custom tinted on site. I remember years ago, all the tester pots by Benjamin Moore came in these much smaller containers and they were all pre-made. This meant that if a particular store you visited was out of stock on a certain color you wanted, you were stuck. But now all the store needs to carry is the correct tinting base and you're good to go. Secondly, because of that new tintable design, the tester's quantity is much higher. The pint of paint that comes in the tester pot can cover up to 30 square feet of wall space. This is huge because having a big chunk of your wall covered will give you a much better impression of what the color will actually look like compared to a small color swatch. Pro tip, if you're going to use the tester on the wall, I always suggest painting against something white, like your trim or doors, assuming they're white, of course. If you use your tester in the middle of a wall, it will be visually impacted by the surrounding previous color, which could skew your perception of the new color. Another thing you can do is paint a white piece of card or Bristol board, which will allow you to also move the color to different areas and get a better sense of how it will be on multiple walls in different lighting conditions. Back to the list. The third benefit of a tester is that it's actual paint. Swatches do a good job at representing the color itself, but the end result won't exactly match up. The main reason for that is a painted surface will have a certain texture that differs from what's on a swatch or in a fan deck. If you really want to know what the wall is going to look like after it's been painted, put some paint on it. Testers allow you to do that. If you think you're ready to sprint to the paint store and stock up on a bunch of testers, I think you should be aware of a few things worth considering before you dive into them. The first and arguably the most important consideration is the finish. Although you can get testers in virtually any color, they're only available in one finish. The sheen level or the finish of paint is something that is decided and made in the manufacturing of the product and therefore can't be changed at your local paint store. All the testers, at Benjamin Moore at least, are an eggshell finish. The good news, however, is eggshell is a very versatile finish because of its compromise of aesthetics and durability. If you want to know a bit more detail about finishes, I'll link our finishes video down below, which we did previously, so you can watch that after this one. If you are really set on something like a matte finish, for example, just know that the tester pot you'll get will have paint that'll appear a bit shinier than what you'll end up getting. Now, speaking of that eggshell finish, I got another quick pro tip. Not all eggshell finishes are created equal. The actual sheen level can differ slightly between the same finish in different products. And this can be very problematic when you're doing touch-ups. You may be tempted to grab a tester to fix a small scuff on your eggshell wall, but I would discourage you from doing that. Touch-ups are always tricky because not only do you have to nail the color, you gotta nail the finish as well. Even if you thought you used an eggshell finish on your walls, the eggshell finish in your tester, it might not be the same. And that's not even factoring whether the walls are dirty or clean or if the finish is faded in time. There's just so many variables to consider. If you want a really consistent look, then just paint the whole room. And if that isn't an option, then 
avoid the tester, get a quart, and just paint corner to corner instead. I always find that's a better alternative than just trying a touch up in the middle of a wall, and then you just have a little spot there. Back to testers. The last thing I wanted to point out is the temptation to over test. Here's an example. If you sampled every single item at your favorite buffet, every single one, in my opinion, that's way beyond sampling. <laughs> you just ate a ton of food. The same thing goes with color testers. It's so easy to go overboard. I've had clients with 20 different off-whites all over their walls, and it got to the point where I was debating giving them a discount for priming the walls for me. <laughs> when it comes down to it, some people just need that level of detailed color analysis to feel confident with their choice. As a professional, I tend to interpret color testers as your last line of defense. After you've filtered through all of the websites and magazines and color swatches, and you've narrowed it down to about three colors or less, then I would encourage you to grab some testers to finalize your choice. On this channel, we do two videos every single week, one about paint colors and the other about the act of painting itself. You don't even know where to begin when it comes to color selection. <laughs> then I think you should check this video out because this is where I show you a simple way to pick a color for virtually any room in the house. If there are colors that you're thinking of using in an upcoming project, let us know in the comments below. That's it for this one. See you on the next one.